this morning I want to uh, talk about God's will. That's what I'm named the uh, title of this message is God's will. Come on. And it's, it's, it's understanding God's will about being sick and being poor and being broke down and busted and disgusted and living down on barely give my own tree, you know. Because a lot of people think that that's God's will for them to be like that. And, you know, if you understand that to be God's will, you're never going to be able to get above that. And you're not, you're not understanding, you're not knowing God's will whenever you think that that's God's will for you to be sick and you to be poor. You know, that's not God's will. And, and uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about that this morning and we're going to move on into uh, a little something else at the end of the, at the end of it. It's going to work into that. But, uh, you know, Second Peter 3 9 says that uh, God's not willing that any perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, there ain't a soul that you can talk to that calls himself a Christian that will argue with you if you say, Well, it's not God's will that any perish, but that, that it's His will that everyone gets saved. Yeah. Oh yeah, brother. Oh yeah, I believe that with all my heart. They don't have a problem with believing that. They'll take that verse and they'll just run wide open with it. But whenever you go to talking about healing, whenever you go to talking about being prosperous, You ask them, well, is it God's will for everyone to be healed? Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, how can you say that? Well, brother, if it was everyone's, if it was God's will for everyone to be healed, everyone would be healed. Okay. But now you just believe, you just said that you believe, you don't have no problem with believing that it's God's will that everybody be saved. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, why ain't everybody saved? Come on. Yeah. That's right. It's God's will that everybody be saved. We, yeah. It's right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's different. That's different. No, it's not. No. And you can, you can look in this Word and you can find God's will. If you just look, you quit believing these lying preachers. Come on. That don't understand the Word of God. And they're not rightly dividing the Word of God. Anybody tells you that God has put sickness on you to teach you something, you can call him a bald faced liar. Come on. Because see, God's word says that uh, let's see how that go. Uh, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, is his will in heaven for sickness to be? No. no then His will must not be on earth for sickness to be. That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen. Oh, well, you know, you may get them to thinking a little bit then, you know. I believe, I believe that it is God's will for everybody to be here. Amen. Amen. I believe that. Do I deal with sickness? I do. Do I know where sickness comes from? I do. It comes from the devil. Amen. There is no sickness comes from God. Come on. All sickness and disease, all cancer comes from God. God will not put cancer on you so that you'll have compassion on someone else that has cancer. He will not do that. No. no. Come on. And if you believe that, you need to change your belief. That's not God. He will not do that. But there's people that preach that. People with big microphones that preach that. I've heard them say it. Shame on them. 
shame on them. Because people believe what they preach. Yeah. And it's that, that part of it is a lie. Not everything they preach is a lie. I've listened to a lot of them. A lot of them that preach, you know, that says stuff like that, they preach a good word most of the time. And then they mix a little bit of this junk in it. And they preach it for gospel. And thousands of people are sitting there listening to it. Staying sick. Huh? Staying sick. Staying sick. Believing that it's God's will that they get that they that they're sick. If you believe that it's God's will for you to be sick, how in the world are you going to believe God to get well? Yeah. You know, they're they're calling and asking for prayer and all, you know, and you know, I just want God's will. I just want God's will. You know, it may be God's will that I have this. Well, what in the world are you doing spending millions of dollars in the hospital trying to get out of God's will? Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. That's what they're doing. Yeah. They'll say that. Well, brother, it might it just might be God's will that, that I go through this. I just might be a Job, you know. And they're being so humble and all. And being so insulting to God when they believe in God, that kind of junk. So insulting to God. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I guess I'm going to read out of the Bible a little bit. Let's turn over to Acts 10.38. Because this is, this to me, this is what proves that it's God's will that all be healed. How many of you can tell me what Acts 10.38 says? No, I don't know what it says. <coughs> what did it say? I don't know what it works for. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, not evil. He didn't go about doing evil. He went about doing good Come on. and healing all that were oppressed Come on. of the devil. And God was with him. Come on. Amen. That means God was into it. Come on. Jesus was doing, going around doing good and healing. Oh! Yeah. Come on. Oh! Yeah. Come on. Oh! I looked up the word, the Greek word, all, oh, it's P-A-S. Pas, I guess. And it's, it is a prime word, and it means, you don't know what it means, do Everybody. It means all. All. <laughs> it means the whole thing. It means as all many as is. Wow. It means everything. It means everyone. It means all. Come on. All. Jesus healed all that were oppressed of the devil. I would say, and God was with him. So it must be God's will that all be healed. Yes. Because Jesus was going about healing all who were healed, all who were sick, who were oppressed with the devil. Come on. Praise God. And people will read that and it'll go right over their head. And they'll go, they'll go right on and they'll get some kind of symptom in their body and they'll believe that, oh, I'm coming down with something. Oh, man. And you know, and they'll let that they'll let the devil put it on them, and they they'll never they'll never believe that it comes from the devil. Though. They'll never believe that sickness is from the devil. They'll believe it's from God. But they'll not believe it's from the devil. See, if you believe it's from the devil, then then you can get a hold of the fact that I am redeemed Amen. from sickness and disease. Amen. And I'm redeemed from that. Jesus paid the price for me. He hung himself on the cross. He took those nails in his wrist and his feet. Come on. He took those stripes on his back that I, Jesus, could be healed. Amen. Amen. The devil is the oppressor. Yes. yes. The devil is the one with sickness and disease in his wings. Not God. Not Jesus. 
The Bible says Jesus had healing in his wings. Meanwhile, we walk around and act like he's got sickness in his wings. Come on. Yeah. That's what we do. I don't. But a lot of people do. God's will is for us to be prosperous. Well, brother. You know, and, and, and see, people hear prosperity. They hear prosperous. And they think that, that you want to be uh, a millionaire like Donald Trump. I tell you, I don't know just how prosperous Donald Trump is right now. He's got the weight of this country kneeling on him. I wouldn't want to be where he's at. All kind of, you know, yeah, he's got a lot of money. But uh, I may be more prosperous than he is because I'm free. I ain't got people hounding me. Even if he wasn't president. You know, they, there's a lot of movie stars out in in, uh, in in California. Got all kind of money. They bound up by drugs and addiction and the devil's got them just bound down. Yeah, they got all kind of money, but they're not very prosperous. Come on. They, they, they deal with sickness and disease. You know, live live such terrible lives. Can't keep, can't stay married. Some of them have been married four or five, six times. You know, they're not prosperous. That's not a prosperous life. Amen. See, we need to understand what being prosperous is. Amen. I'm a prosperous man. Come on. But I got 14 grandkids, 15 grandkids. Sixteen, something like that. Fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> Probably some of the what? And 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 some of them, I, I just claim them as my grandkids because I love them so much. Yep. Like that little girl. You know. Uh, I, I'm prosperous. Amen. I I got I got a little bit of money in my pocket today. You know. And, and I, I'm going to tell you something, you know, you ain't got to have millions of dollars to feel comfortable. All you got to do is trust in God, man. That's Come it. On. Come on. It's just like that testimony I tell you, I said this morning about those tires and stuff and my trip to Savannah and back, you know. I mean, right there was such a prime example of a prosperous man, you know. Every time something I, that I needed, it was provided. Amen. Yes. That's being prosperous. Your needs are provided. Yes. You know, but see, people, people think that that if you get if God's providing you something, you get sit down on your duff there and just God's going to pour it. That don't work that way. You can sit on your duff and do nothing and think that God's going to provide for you, and you will starve to death. Because His Word says, if you don't work, you won't eat. You know. It's God's will that we be prosperous. John 10.10. 10, who knows what John 10.10 10 says? The thief. The thief abundance. comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, Jesus, come on. has come that you may have life in the uh, uh, the, the, the yeah. Amplified says life to the full till it overflows Amen. abundantly. Amen. Who's got an amplifier? You got an amplifier? Yes. How's it read in the passion? God's will is for us to have an abundant life. Read it, darling. The thief, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Yeah, he came that we would enjoy life. Yeah. Oh, can we? Should we be enjoying life? Yeah, we should be yes, enjoying so life. Yeah, read. Says, the thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal. 
steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overcome. Amen. Praise God. You know, that's what that's what God's will is. Amen. Yes. God's will is for us to have an abundant life. God's will is for us to have a, a, a flourishing life. Not, not a, a life of being beat down, busted, and disgusted, living on barely get a long street, driving a, a, a flop fender board with, with, with all the tires. <laughs> you know, that's not God's will. There's a lot of people live like that, but it's not God's fault. And I'm not saying that, you know, you got to have a, a Cadillac and, you know, all kind of fancy stuff to be prosperous. No. But there's nothing wrong with a fellow having that neither. That's right. You know, maybe he works hard for it. Maybe he's done a lot and God's blessed him with it. Amen. You know, the more prosperous you are and the more, lucky, you know, luxurious life you live in, especially if you're a Christian, oh, man. Oh, you are, you, 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 you just... My goodness, you know, especially and if you're a preacher and if you're living an abundant life and you got, you know, just uh, a lot of money and, and you drive you driving a nice car and, and all this, you know, well look at him. There he is, he's getting them people's money every Sunday, they're giving that money to look at him driving that big fine Ford F four fifty. Four by four King Ranch. You know, look at that. Who does he think he is, you know? They don't know that he works five and six days a week and pays for that, you know? Yeah. It's a cost. Huh? It's a cost. Everybody pays for it. That's right. They don't know what he does to pay for that. They don't even know if that maybe someone come up and give that to him. That's right. That's right. That happens a lot of times. A lot of times, you know, there's, there's preachers driving big fine cars and people are looking at them and, and thinking that they, they, you know, got all kind of money and all, and somebody gave it to them because the Lord said, I want you to bless them with it. And that person had, them, had the means to be able to be a blessing because his, his word says, I'll bless you and you will be a blessing. Come on. Amen. You know, that's what he blesses you for, so that you can bless somebody else. Yeah. And if you bless somebody else, then you'll bless you some more. Come on. You know? And he said, you can try to outgive me, I'll just show you. You gonna give him a hundred dollars? I'll give you a thousand dollars. Come on. Yeah. And you just keep opening the spigot, letting it pour out, oh, I'm gonna give this. You know, you got a spigot there that you're letting the water go out. You're pouring it out to this one and you're pouring it out to that one. And God takes the lid off of you. <laughs> Pretty soon. You're over hey, it's running over. I can't contain it, God. It's running over. You want me to stop? No! <laughs> Praise God. He might tell you, we'll get you three or four spigots coming out of there. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. You just keep pulling it in. Can y'all see the comparison there? Mm -hmm. Amen. He's blessing you, and you just continue to be a blessing. Amen. Just continue to be a blessing. Money don't have you. You got money. Come on. Yeah, right. Come on. Hey, brother, you need a hammer here. Man, let me buy you two of them. Well, no, man, that's going to take all your money. I don't worry about that. There's plenty more where that comes from. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's fine. We got it. Jesus said that he, Jesus said that is why he came to give us an abundant life. Everything Jesus did, he did it for me. He did it for us. He did it for me. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Let's turn over there. 
This is what people need to get a hold of. Amen. Surely he has bore, and I, I like to read this this way. Surely he has bore my griefs and carried my sorrows. Yet I did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for our trans in far in in iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes I am healed. Jesus bore my griefs. Jesus carried my sorrows. He, he, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. That's what he did when he hung himself on the cross. Everything that I just read, he did it for us. Everything, all of that was provided for us that day. By his stripes, we was healed. The beatings that he took, was the sickness and disease was put upon him. The chastisement that brought us peace was put upon him. All of it was for us. You say, why are you saying that? Because I'm building up to something that I want to say. Jesus gave himself so that we can have an abundant life. So why do we insult Him? You say, how do we insult Him? By not recognizing and acknowledging and receiving with gladness the free gift of healing and prosperity that He has provided. Now, I'm not really accusing anyone here of that, you know. It's like I told her a lot of times when she and I get up here and preach this and we're preaching to the choir. But we, a lot of things that we preach to y'all is so that y'all can go out and preach it to someone else. You know, I'm not saying that y'all are not living this. I believe that y'all are. <coughs> but... That brings me to this. <clears throat> and this is what, this is where the insulting part that I wanted to talk about comes in. Because, and I know y'all probably heard this and y'all kind of know how I am about some of these songs that I hear on the radio. And y'all probably, if you listen to the radio, you've probably heard this song. And it's a, you know, it, it's got a, 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 it just, it grabs your ears, you know. And the lady that sings just got a, a sweet voice. You know, and it, it starts off as, I know if you wanted to, you could wave your hand. And all my sickness would go away. All my pain would go away. What I got to do is for her. He wants to. Amen. He wants to. He, he, in fact, he did it. Yeah. 2018 years ago, when he hung himself on the cross, he waved his hand. He took the sickness and disease. He took your pains. I just read it. I just read it right there in Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. Yeah. He took your pains. He took your griefs. But yet she's going to sing this song. I know it won't. Aubrey, if you spent your whole life and you come up with $20 million and you say, I want to give this to Pastor. I love him so much. He's just, I mean, he means the world and over to me. I just want to give it to him. And you bring it to me. And you say, Pastor, 
here, this is yours. I want to give it to you. And I look at you and I say, oh, brother, I thank you for it, but I don't really want that. I want you. I just want you. I just want you to be my friend. I just want you to, to love me. I just want you to, to, to walk with me. That all sounds good, but I just insulted him because it brought you great joy to be able to come and give that to me. Yeah. Tomorrow. Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. People don't realize that's what they're saying to Jesus when they say that, but even if you don't. And he says, my goodness, what are you talking about even if I don't? I already have. Here it is. It's yours. I said it before you. Come on. I've set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. People will read that verse and that, oh, well, that's up in heaven. No, it ain't. Because i got news for you. There's no enemies in heaven. Come on. He says, I know if you wanted to, you could wave your hand. <clears throat> then he says, uh, but even if you don't, help me with the healer. No, he says, help me want the healer more than the healing. He's provided the healing for you. That's what he took the beatings for. Come on. And you're going to say, Jesus, help me with the healing more than the healing. The healer more than the healing. Help me, won't you, Lord? Help me, won't you, Jesus, more than anything? It's all in there. If you want Him, you want what He got for you. If you want Him, you should want that He. But you see, people act like that's so special to talk like that. They act like it's so special to say, but even if you don't, I'll still trust you. No, you don't trust Him. Because if you if you trusted him any at all, you'd never say those words, even if you don't. Because right. Lord, you already have. Yeah. Yeah. And if you believe he's already done it, then you never will be able to believe that even if you don't. Yeah. You see, Mark chapter 22 says, When you pray, believe that you've received, and you shall have it. Well, if you believe that you received it, then you're not going to come back and say, But even if you don't, I'll still trust you. Because see, when you say that, you're not believing that you received it. Come on. Yeah. You're waiting on it to happen. Come on. And I've got news for you. James said a double-minded a dub, a double man is unstable in all his ways. And you're being double-minded yeah. when you say that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You're being double-minded. You're being double-minded. Yeah. And you can't be double-minded and believe God. And you can't speak to a mountain and tell that mountain to move and then say, well, even if it don't, I still trust you. And see, but they're saying, uh, uh, the, the, one, the one song says, uh, when you don't move the mountain, I need you to move. It don't say nowhere's in here where he's going to move the mountain. It says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move, and it will be moved. But see, they believe God's going to move. He said, no, you move it. Come on. Come on. You move it. I made, I'll give you permission, provision to do it. Well, how have you done that? Look at Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Come on. I've given you authority to speak and tell something to get out of your way. Come on. Yeah. Well, why don't it? It's because you ain't got enough faith. Boy, you must not think you got a lot of faith. Now, I'm working on it. How many mountains have I moved? Well, I've moved some. Some don't move. But that don't mean God didn't do it. That means I just couldn't believe for it. Come on. Because yeah. Yeah. see, Jesus said, if you, have, if you believe, all things are possible for him that believes. There's that three-letter word again. Oh. oh! Amen. Well, if you believe, you might get something to do. You might, you might get it, brother. If you believe hard enough, you believe long enough, you, you, you might get it. No, that's not what Jesus said. 
Jesus said, if you believe, all things are possible for him that believes. If you believe, cancer can leave your body if you believe. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Come on. If you believe that you need $10,000 to fix your front porch, it's possible for you to get $10,000. Come on. Yeah. You mean to tell me you think somebody will come? I didn't say that. Right. I didn't say somebody was going to come up and give you $10,000. It might be. It's possible. But it's also possible for God to give you a job or you go do what you need to do to get that $10,000 and it'll be yours. Amen. Amen. If you believe, all things are possible. Not some things. All things. And if you get that out of your way and believe that, you'll never be saved even if you don't. And these religious people that go around saying, even if you don't, I'll still trust you. They ain't never going to get a dad blame thing. Yep. Nothing. Nothing. But, you know, I, 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 I want to calm down here because I want to help people. Because some people may have already turned me off, or, you know, because I get so worked up about you. I get so frustrated hearing that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, that song comes on the radio, and y'all know which one I'm talking about, Even If. I cannot stand to listen to it. And then, and then this in here, this lady sings here. And I mean, you know, when I hear it, it makes you want to sing along with it. That's how, that's how it, it, it grabs you. And even the one, Even If, it'll grab you. And the other, you know, uh, When You Don't Move the Mouth, you know, it's a good, upbeat song, you know. Can you go listen to it? And it's like they got their theology all wrong. You know, the guy singing the Even If song, he, he, he's, he's misquoting about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He's got it all wrong there. When he says, I, 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 uh, uh, uh. See, I, I know that you're able and I know that you can. And see, Shadrach, Meshach, y'all heard me preaching for you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, I know that he, our God is able and He will. There's a big difference in saying He will and He can. Yeah. Right. See, right. He can is not a, a, a faith statement, but He will is a faith statement. Yes. He will. And see, then they misquote for that they think they said, but even if He don't, we'll still trust Him. No, they didn't say that. But they said, even if it were not so. That's what he said. He said, yet were that not so. See, they're believing that it is so. They're believing that. And he said, yeah, but, but yet if that weren't so. It didn't, it don't matter. We still wouldn't bow down to what you want us to bow down to. Come on. And you see, a lot of people miss this. Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego believed that God would, would, would protect them and, and uh, deliver them. And so they made this, the uh, furnace seven times hotter. And a lot of people miss this. But the Bible says when they got up there to throw them into the fire, the fire was so hot that it killed the ones that went up to throw them in. Well, how did they get into the fire? They walked in. They walked in. Come on. They jumped in. Yeah. They must have. Because the Bible says, the Bible says that the ones that went up there to throw them in died. When they got they could they couldn't they couldn't get close enough. They got to the fall so hard and killed them before they even got there. How did they get in? They walked in. They went right on in there, singing and praising God. Hey, he's gonna take care of us. Somewhere or another, as they was going in there, I believe them ropes burned off because it killed them fellas. So it, it, them ropes didn't last much longer. Right. Them ropes that had them bound, they, they fell off. I believe they fell off before they even got into the fire. And don't you know that they, they, they seen them fellas are dying and they're walking in that fire and they're they not even feeling the heat, I believe. They just go right on in there and just having a high old time and there Jesus is with them. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, because the Bible said there was four men in there. Four men in the fire. 
fourth man in the fire. And people want to say, but even if you don't, I'll still trust you. Huh? Insulting. Insulting. Insulting God. They don't even realize they're doing it. They really are being insulted. When, he's, when He has paid the price that He has paid, and then we do not recognize His body. We, not, we do not recognize all that He did. And we, we act so humble. And we act like it's just very reverent. You know, that they're just so, we just, you know, I, I, know, I know if you wanted to, you could do this. But if you don't, I'm okay with it. What do you mean, if I know? I already did. I already, I already provided you for it. I hung on the cross for I took the beatings for you. The beatings that brought you peace. The beatings that brought you healing. I knew that I knew the devil had sickness in his wings. Before this, it was there, but it, it's no longer there because all you got to do is trust in me. I got healing for you. It's provided. All you got to do is partake of it. All you gotta do is reach out and receive it. Quit, quit, quit bullying. Quit waiting on Jesus to provide it for you. Reach out and receive what's there. Amen. You see, there's a table set before us in the presence of our enemies. If there's healing you need, it's there, set before you. Come on. Reach out and receive it. Don't stand back here and say, "Oh, I'm just not worthy to receive." Lord's table. How insulting. How insulting when the price that He's paid for this to be yours. And you're going to stand. You're going to stand and act so reverent and so humble and say, oh, but I'm just not worthy of, of Your grace. I'm not worthy of You, Lord. When He He's done that, when He's doing all that He's done to provide it for you. Do, do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. I pray that these people watch this and hear it. I pray that somebody can get a hold of this. Amen. You know, it's like Katie said last week, you know, when she heard the message that she had heard, the lady believed that God gave her sickness. And, oh, oh, the, the, that, that Jesus said that uh, uh, now is not the time for her to be healed. Ain't that how it was? Yeah. You know, I got news for her and everybody else that believes that. This book right here, you will never find that in. That's right. That's right. You will never find that in. And the spirit that told her that is a lying spirit. That's right. I believe she heard the spirit tell her that. Yeah. But it was a lying spirit. Yeah. It was the devil that told her that. And she believed. Because Jesus would never say that to her. No. You can go through the four gospels and you'll never see them. anybody that came to it. He said, now, you have to have to wait a little while. You can't get your healing today. It's not time for it. Just a little while longer. Wait ten more years, and you'll get your healing. Just keep believing. No, Jesus didn't say that. No, He didn't. And there's all kind of ways that He healed. He spit in people's eyes, he spit on the fellow's tongue, he spit in their ears, stuck his fingers in their ears. But not once did he say, oh no, you can't. You know, even when the the, uh, the boy that had the spirit, and 
and the man brought him to Jesus and said, I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't heal you. And he said, but if you can do anything, and that's where Jesus said, if I can, if you can believe, all things are possible. Yeah. And then the fellow said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. At least he acknowledged that he, you know, I believe, I believe in, but there is unbelief in me, and I need to get rid of. It. Come on, you know. And that's what Jesus was addressing right there. Yeah, unbelief. Yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't addressing that. There, that's a bad demon, and only I can get rid of him. Come that's on. the way people preach it. Yeah. Because they misunderstood that, just like I did for years. Years and years and years, I misunderstood that verse, that's, that scripture right there. And I, you know, I always thought, man, you got to fast and pray to get rid of some of these demons. No, no, they all defeated. They all defeated. They're all defeated already. That's right. They're all defeated already. Yep. And all you got to do is say, "Get out!" Come on. You don't even have to say, "Get out!" You just say, "Get out." Get out. That's right. Come on. And if you say it, and know that whenever you say it, all the heaven backs you up. And you ain't got no doubt in your part. And you know that you are an ambassador with all authority, with all the authority that Jesus gave to you in 10 Luke 10 19. Would you believe that? And that devil will know if you believe that. Right. And if you believe that, all you got to do is say, get out. And he will leave. Amen. He will leave. Because he can't stay. Because you told him he can't stay. He's got to leave. He's got to leave. But I got news for you. Very few people full of that has that amount of faith. Yeah. That's, not, that's bad news, but that's the truth. You can have that. You can have that amount of faith, but it's going to take fasting and prayer to get it. Yeah. It's not going to take fasting and prayer to get rid of that demon. It's going to take fasting and prayer to get rid of the unbelief. That's yeah. right. That's right. right. That so overwhelms us. Yeah. That's the Christian problem, is getting rid of their unbelief. And the reason is, is because of the junk that I talked about today. The way people interpret things. And they don't know God's will. You know God's will. That you can believe for anything. That's right. <clears throat> See, whenever you're not sure of God's will, you can't say that you're in faith because you're not sure of His will. That's right. That's right. If you don't know His will, find His will. Yeah. If you're not sure if, if what you're doing is God's will, find out if it is. How do you find out? Well, one way is get down on your knees and pray and talk to Him. He'll let you know. Yeah. Another way is by is get in his word. If you want to know his will, then fill it in his word. Yeah. That's how you can find out his will. And if, if, if there's things in here, you know, if you say, Well, brother, I, I need to know if I need to buy a new truck. And I can't find no words in the Bible where that where about that, you know. Well, that's where you need to get on your face before God and find out. Ask yeah. him. See, that's how you find out his will on that. He'll take. That's right. He'll take. Because he loves us. How do you know? How do I know that he loves us? Because he gave Jesus. That's right. Him, that he can have a relationship with us. That's, right. That's the whole reason that Jesus went to the cross. So that he can have a we can have that relationship with God that we had before.
for the truth. The relationship that we had back in the garden. So that we can do, have the relationship and do the things that we did before the truth. Yeah. Come on. Amen. That's what people need to get a hold of too. Is the things that was happening before the tree has been restored back to us. Yeah, amen. And see, that's one thing that we're learning listening to Dan Moore. Some of the things that, you know, because we've been, you know, Pastor Katie and myself, we've been what, 20, 30 years, you know, in the faith movement. And I mean, you know, it brought us a long ways. But I never thought about the fact that everything that Adam and Eve was doing before the tree, we are it's been restored back to us. That's why when we speak, we can speak things into existence. Amen. Because our words have power. Yes. Yeah. Because that's why we can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and cast into the sea. Because if Adam walked along, he's like, I don't want that tree there. That's right. You move and get old yonder. And he moved that tree. Yeah. And see, people looking at me right now, I don't believe that. Well, I don't care if you believe it or not, it's so. Like Brother Hayden said, just because you don't believe it don't mean it ain't so. <laughs> it's still so, whether you believe it or not. Come on. I choose to believe it. Because yeah. right. it's the truth. Amen. And when we can get a hold of that, and we can get a hold of who we are in Christ, and we can get a hold of the fact that the, 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 the authority that has been given to us and start walking in that authority that we're not walking in. I'm talking about us here. I mean, we walk in some of it, but we're not walking in near the authority that we have. We're not walking in. So many times we end up being a morning five instead of an Andy. <laughs> <laughs> We run out there hollering, Citizen Duran! Citizen Duran! <laughs> <laughs> and ain't nobody listening to us. Because we don't know the authority that we have. But I've seen it. I've seen it. When, 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 you, when you know that what you said has to happen, it'll happen. Amen. And just like that. It's like the other night. I was sleeping. Man, there was a storm coming through here. Just, I mean, I ain't never seen a storm like that. And I got up, walked out on the porch, and I mean, the lightnings are popping from one side to the other. And just directly, I, I just said, be still. I said, peace, be still. That's what I said. I said, peace, be still. Went back to bed and went back to sleep. Just within just a little bit. I mean, it wasn't long. It was gone. It moved on out of here. Yep. Wasn't affecting us no more. Blow right on through. And it, I mean, you know, I, I just, I stand on Psalms 91 too. To say, you know, there was a lot of people you know, had some trees fell in their houses that night, different things, you know. Uh, I mean, I literally go to bed at night, storms blow through and all, and I sleep peaceful. Why? Because I believe Psalms 91. There shall no evil befall my dwelling. That's what it says in there. It says all things are possible to him that believes, and I believe that. I go to sleep at night believing that no, no evil shall come near my dwelling. I believe that. And you can believe that. And I believe you do believe that. Amen? Amen. Sandy Treatment.